So here we are today in Nicaragua. 25 years after Ortega's Sandinista Socialist Revolution. It's considered to be one of the poorest countries in Central America. Managua's location on the Pan American Highway makes it a transportation hub of sorts. We are in Mercado Mayoreo. As you can see, it's a pretty crowded bus station. Here at the bus station, I'm meeting up with Hector from last night. This station basically takes you up to the north of Nicaragua. Long distance. Long distance. They also take you to the east of Nicaragua. The amount of people traveling through here attracts hawkers of all kinds. Everyone just trying to make a living any way they can. It's a combination market, depot, and food court. Hector brought me here for a typical working class meal. Wow, that was fast. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Ooh, tender. Mm. That's some kick. That's nice. So you weren't around for the bad times? No. Even though I didn't live in the revolution, I um, I do feel the impact and the importance of it. Mm -hmm. And I and I hear all the stories. It seems to be a politically engaged country, always has been. There's many levels, but I can tell that we're very passionate about politics and we're very ideological. And I think it's important for the youth to be involved in that because if the old generation keeps making the same decisions, so you want to try the salpicon? Now what is this? It looks like slow-cooked mashed beef or pork? It's beef. It's diced meat. They cook it with onions and green pepper. And the salpicon is basically a meal you have when it's pretty hot, since they serve it cold. Oh, that's good. Tang. The lemon gives you some kind of freshness. People still define themselves today on where they were and what they did during those years. Everything has changed. People that used to be in favor of the revolution are not anymore, and people that you didn't used to be in favor are. This is a feature of Nicaraguan history going back. It is a sincere change of heart. It's not like uh, people are shift alliances out of convenience. And you're always going to find people shifting because some days they feel this way and some days they feel the other way. It's like that here, complicated. Alliances shift, hearts change. Expediency can become a priority. Cheers. The younger generation of Nicaragua remembers neither the revolution nor Somoza, but they still got to live and breathe the mythology every day. So when was the first time you heard about Nicaragua? Well, I mean, I was aware of the country. I was aware a little bit of the history. Uh, obviously, the 80s, I mean, it was a central, it was a very uh, politicized time for me. It was a big issue for me. But the average American doesn't know about it at all. The Iran-Contra scandal was a big, 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 big thing. Everybody who discussed Nicaragua during the 80s had a point of view. My understanding of what was happening in Nicaragua was colored entirely by my distaste for Reagan and Oliver North. So what is this? This is a traditional bao. This is a very popular place. It's been here for over 30, 40 years. It has a lot of Caribbean and slave influences. What they do is uh, they put the cassava together with this, this meat and also the banana, and they let it cook slowly, and that makes the meat very tender. Bajo, traditional, labor-intensive, and very, very filling. Adela and her friend Fifi here have been making it the same way for years. What is it? It's beef that's been marinated overnight in a sauce of garlic, onions, tomato, and bitter orange. The marinated beef is laid inside a big pot which has been lined with banana leaves and layered with yucca. Add fresh wild green onions, red and green peppers, and then add a few heaps of sweet and Maduro plantains in their skins. Wrap in the banana leaves tightly to make sure no steam escapes. Yank the blue tarp over and make sure there's a tight seal and cook. Steam, actually, as vaho means literally vapor and let it go over low heat for hours. When served, it's usually with the fresh, crunchy cabbage slaw so popular around here. And it hits like a f***ing brick, let me tell you. What do you think about it? This, it's fill you up food. I mean, again, yeah. I'm liking the meat. Sweet banana? I'm not, I don't like, you know, sweet much. Okay. I like spicy and savory and salty. Yeah, I need heat. 
your average hardworking Monoguan living comfortably or close to comfortably or even just above the poverty line, this would be a good, nutritious, and affordable meal. This, on the other hand, is how some other people live. It's called La Chureca. La Chureca is a slang term for dump. This, just outside the capital, is home for well over 300 families known as churaqueros, some of them third-generation trash pickers. Not exactly, you know, appropriate to move over to Frontline all of a sudden, but on the other hand, seeing this, I don't... It's not feeling so good about doing another scene where I shove food in my face. Every day, about 1,300 tons of garbage is brought here. Dawn to dusk it comes. It barely leaves the trucks before they're on it with their hooks, separating out glass, metal, plastic, paper, food. Well, I'm totally depressed. The churaqueros pick through medical waste and every kind of horrifying filth in the hope of getting maybe a dollar's worth of recyclables a day. President Daniel Ortega, socialist hero, now has personal wealth estimated at $400 million. This is how they recycle in the workers' paradise. Sometimes travel is not pretty. I'll tell you this. You look at this and you see people eating out of here. The very notion of, the very notion of food television what I do seems somehow obscene. Well, I hate to see these kids here. Sally Struthers on you or anything, but, you know, there it is. I mean, holy f man, my daughter's that age. <laughs> 